More than 200,000 people are affected by Parkinson's disease. New advances in the medical field are finding ways to improve lives. Now here talking about Parkinson's disease is neurosurgeon Dr. Marv Eskandar, and we thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good, and so as we have a little bit more of an awareness about Parkinson's disease, as we started off saying more than 200,000 people are really diagnosed annually, uh, from a viewer's perspective, give us a little bit about what exactly is Parkinson's disease? So Parkinson's disease is probably the most common uh, neurodegenerative disorder. That is, it's one of these uh, diseases that affects virtually everybody uh, in time. It affects people of all ethnic groups. And uh, the, uh, the things that people would experience are a tremor, um, a significant slowness of movement, the inability to get up out of a chair, to you know, walk, to stop and uh, stiffness, you know, very significant uh, rigidity of their arms and their legs. And over time, this can be really quite disabling and then quite a burden to the patients and their families. We know of uh, two very well-known people, Muhammad Ali, of course, and Michael J. Fox, and both of those uh, gentlemen have suffered with Parkinson's for, and of course, uh, Muhammad Ali subsequently passing. But mm -hmm. uh, when we look at that, we, we see a very strong man and then we see all of a sudden the the inactivity of mm -hmm. limbs and, and things like that. It's a progressive process, am I correct? Correct. So it starts, you know, first with some mild symptoms. Usually tremor is the thing that uh, people first notice. Mm -hmm. And then over time, over, you know, a period of two to five years, you see the full uh, disease picture. And so Muhammad Ali is a perfect example. And, you know, I would say he had fairly uh, severe Parkinson's disease. And, and as you say, you could tell what the effect of this disease was on someone who's, you know, incredibly strong and, and mm -hmm. exuberant and, and so on, and it really, you know, slowed him down significantly. So let's talk about treatment, because there's some family members who are, you know, who have relatives and have some questions about treatment. What is the treatment uh, options available for those with Parkinson's? So the first treatment is, is medical, and there are actually some uh, very good medical treatments for it. And let me back up a little bit. So Parkinson's disease is caused by uh, the loss of a certain type of neuron in the brain that uh, generates dopamine. And so the medications uh, remedy that. And they work for about, for the most part, for 5, 10, 15 years. But then often they become less effective and people start to have either worsening symptoms of the Parkinson's disease or very significant side effects of the medications. So you mentioned Michael J. Fox. And what you're seeing, you know, his excessive movements are dyskinesias. They're actually a side effect of the medication. Um, so some combination of those things is what we see. And then uh, that's the time to consider doing surgery for Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about surgery, success rate, how's it go? It's actually quite effective. Uh, virtually all people experience uh, significant improvements. Uh, the particular treatment I'm talking about is called uh, deep brain stimulation. It sounds worse than it is. It's actually a relatively minimally invasive surgery. We put a very thin electrode into a part of the brain uh, called the subthalamic nucleus. The electrode measures a millimeter. Uh, and then it's connected by a wire that goes under the skin to uh, something like a pacemaker. Um, so there's nothing to see outwardly. And uh, about 85% of people experience some significant benefit there have been multiple studies on this. It's been approved by the FDA, uh, and uh, something like 150,000 people have already had this surgery and have done quite well with it. Yeah, our, view our viewers were actually just seeing it just a few seconds ago, the actual, and it, it looks like a pacemaker, mm -hmm. and, uh, and he said it's a pretty non-invasive. Correct. Uh, yeah. And so we're seeing it right there. So give us a little bit more. Yeah, so the, you know, the surgery is... Uh, is done not for everybody, but again for the people who have kind of reached that point where they where they need it, and uh, we can do it either with the person awake or under anesthesia. It takes about uh, three to four hours to do the uh, to do the initial procedure where we put the electrodes into the brain, and then a second shorter outpatient procedure lasting 45 minutes to put in the pacemaker, and then the device gets turned on, uh, kind of using a magnetic wand and uh, adjusted over a period of two to three months. And so talk about screening, because obviously for people uh, who uh, may be feeling, may think they have some symptoms, mm -hmm. what about screening and what advice do you give to people about getting checked out? Obviously very important, and uh, it, ideally people are seen by someone who specializes in movement disorders, Parkinson's disease and movement disorders neurologists. Uh, 
and then they can help guide them as to what needs to be done. I would say, you know, most of the people we see don't need surgery right away. They, you know, they need an adjustment of their medications. Uh, but then, you know, when the time comes to be at an, uh, to be at an experienced center that does, uh, does a fair number of these. And, uh, you know, I'll add that one of the challenges is really, you know, outreach and access. For instance, we've, we did a study looking at um, surgery in, uh, for Parkinson's disease across different uh, populations and found that uh, across the country, uh, only about 1% of these surgeries is done on African Americans or for African Americans. And so there's a huge disparity there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of my personal goals is really to you know, improve the education and the outreach and, and make sure that you know, everybody in the community has access to these treatments. And they're, they're available you know, right here. Mm -hmm. so. Dr. Ahmad Eskandar is from uh, Montefiore. He's the chair of the Department of Neurosurgery at Montefiore and uh, sharing with us a little bit about Parkinson's. And so let's talk about some of the work that you're doing at Montefiore, particularly dealing with this. So I think, uh, you know, this is a perfect example of one of the ways we want to, you know, get out and, and, and reach the community and make sure people are aware. Uh, obviously, to facilitate the uh, people's access and ability to get through the system. So we have, you know, dedicated navigators, if you will, that can help somebody wend their way through the various complexities of, uh, of, uh, of the medical system, the availability of, uh, of translators, um, and, uh, you know, the availability of, of good, of good follow-up. And I think, you know, one of the most important things is that it's here, it's local, so people don't have to travel, you know, to another borough or to another city or whatever, you know, we have this here. And, and I want to make sure people are aware that they can avail themselves of it. All right, Dr. Ahmad Eskandar, Chair of the Department of Neurosurgery at Montefiore. Thanks so much for coming and sharing with us. It's my pleasure. I Talk really enjoyed it. Parkinson's. Thank you so much Take for bringing care. some awareness.